welcome you to Conversations and Coffee today on this 14th day of October, 2021. How beautiful have the fall days been here in central Ohio. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of the Conversations and Coffee program. We are here virtually by Zoom, brought to us by virtue of Lindsay Lasanti, graduate of Otterbein University, linking us together from the Cultural Arts Center in downtown Columbus. Katie Fisher, graduate of Columbus College of Art and Design, creatively gets the word out on our website for our beloved Cultural Arts Center. We have a great faculty, staff, with Jeffrey Martin's leadership, bringing arts to the city. <clears throat> Today we have with us our current main gallery artist, Karen Dahl. Karen's exhibit is named Art and Jazz, with composers Christopher Berg, Brian Cashwell, and Michael Cox. Their music accompanies the beautiful abstract art of Karen. Karen shares that she works to enrich the meaning of each painting by adding jazz. <clears throat> Her belief is that music guides the viewer to linger, to look closely, and consider sound and color together. Karen's background is in academia. She's an emeritus professor at The Ohio State University and has worked internationally in Hubechen and Thailand on critical thinking. Her doctorate is from Indiana University in language studies. Karen's art training includes more than a decade of taking courses from private teachers, as well as course week at Denison University. The hallmarks of her work are color exploration and scraffito lines. She works with color contrasts and connecting lines to unify her compositions. We will hear in the background as Karen shares her art today, the musical compositions of Christian Berg, Dr. Brian Cashwell and Michael Cox. Christian is an adjunct professor of jazz bass, modern guitar and arranging at the University of Dayton. He's enjoyed an active career in jazz for four decades. Dr. Brian Cashwell received his doctorate from the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music and currently teaches jazz theory and history of American creative music there. Michael Cox is a performer who also is tenured professor at Capital University teaching saxophone and jazz studies. He performs regularly with the Columbus Jazz Orchestra. Karen, take us away into this beautiful world of art and jazz. Thank you, Ellen. Um, we are going to have a conversation about art and jazz, and I would really like it to be a conversation. So um, feel free to raise a question, make a comment, so that we really do have a back and forth. My work in this gallery um, is accompanied by something that might be new. I'm gonna hold it up now. This is a QR code. Alongside the paintings are labels with QR codes. And what participants do is take their cell phones, scan the QR code, put the cell phone to their ear, look at the painting and listen to uh, the recording. Um, the two composers, Brian and uh, Christian, have responded to my music by writing original jazz. And some of the time I have responded to their jazz by making an aesthetic response in paint. So it's art and jazz back and forth to see what it is that we have um, when we combine two art forms. And that's the point of it. I am, as Ellen mentioned, trying to build meaning by adding another layer. And I'm hoping that that layer helps people to linger a bit and to see new areas of the art and to enrich the whole experience. So that's what the whole thing is about. Mm -hmm. um, let's begin by looking at one of the paintings. Now, 
all of this is remote. I'm in the library of my home. Lindsay, looks like you're in- I'm in my room, yeah. <laughs> you're in your room, that's right. So good luck to all of us as we reach out and try to do this stuff remotely. Um, we're going to begin with um, blue descending. There's blue descending. Now I'm gonna talk about what it is that I was doing as an artist. And then we'll listen to the music to see um, how the music fits with the painting. As you can see, this is a, a field of descending strokes going from the top in blue. And my point is to build depth and to, and to build motion. This field of blue cascades down into a darker area and then into a field of green. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of marks. There's a lot of motion. I don't know if your eyes can see the red uh, marks in the center. Mm -hmm. that those red marks were made by scraping and that was a scraffito um, uh, move on my part. In a few minutes I'll show you the tool that I used, but I scraped from, from the top layer to the second layer to get that red that was underneath. So mm -hmm. this is what I mailed to the two composers. And then now let's listen and see what they sent back to me. So here is their composition. If you would play the music for Blue Descending. Oh dear. Okay, let's cut that off. It sounds like they were playing on a toy piano and that wasn't what they were doing. Uh, Lindsay, if you can do anything to, to raise the bass and to make that louder so that it's a better uh, sound copy. Do you wanna try it again just for a second or do you need a moment? Um, is that any better? It really isn't. I'm sorry, that's a shame. Um, let me just talk about it then. What happened here is the musician said, we hear a tumbling forward motion and we'll respond to that in five, four time. So one, two, three, one, two, three is a waltz, but one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, lets the music sort of tumble forward. So they wrote a piece, um, not on a toy piano, that um, is called Waltz in Five. And that was their response. Um, this pairing of art and music lets us know that in fact, um, when you combine art and music, you get really another idea. The whole business of Waltz in Five was beyond what I conceived of in my painting. And so that's sort of the point of this whole uh, exhibition that you get you get more when you uh, take a look at the aesthetic responses from two art forms. I'd like now to show a film a film a painting called Transcending. Mm. Can you do Transcending? That's the next one. There it is. Um, I know painting, uh, painters are not supposed to have favorite paintings, but this is my favorite. And it's my favorite because I love these colors. This is obviously a study in blue and it, it goes to the modulation between blue and purple, between blue and sort of a faded green, between blue and almost a, a olive color. When the musicians, um, got this piece via email, what they did was to take one theme and to vary it just slightly so that you would hear the theme and then you would hear it change just a little bit and then just a little bit more. So they modulated the theme in order to later produce a melody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder if we should play that or not. I, I can try it again. I This is the audio is like Coming back through my microphone, so I think that's why it's sounding it. I, I'm trying to figure out a way to just play the audio sound without. Here, let me try. That's better. 
Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's stop it because it's not good enough. But but you can hear at least the theme that they developed. And then what happened to that theme is it gets changed and changed and changed. And then what happens in jazz is improvisation. And and the piece goes on to include some jazz improvisations that are really pretty interesting. So it's an interesting piece of music um, and and, uh, and a surprise. Now, um, oh my. So now let's, do you think you could play, show us Cantos? Cantos is the, the rust colored one. It's the third one. I am no, so can't. sorry, I just lost my PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I'll talk, I'll talk for a minute while you find it. And what I'm gonna talk about is what kinds of tools I use as I produce my art. I'm in my library, but I've lugged these things up and I think you might enjoy seeing them. So I'm gonna hold them up. This is a palette knife. And I like to smear paint on with a palette knife and make make a nice thick uh, coat of paint. This is uh, a stick of graphite. And I make marks with graphite, sometimes long uh, scribble-like. Um, graphite. And, and that's another tool. And here's the third. This is a ceramic, can you see it? Uh-huh. A ceramic scraping tool. And that's how I made those red marks on the previous painting. Mm-hmm. That is, I scrape in, it's a ceramic tool, scrape in, go through one layer and then to another. And then this is a roller, and I like to use the very end of the roller and make a squiggly mark. It's, it's fun and interesting to use rollers as a mark making tool. And the last is simply a um, pastel, an oil pastel for, for making marks. Hmm. Now, Lindsay, how are you doing there? I don't have cantos. I just double checked, but I can, I have all of the others ready. Okay, we'll skip cantos, but let me say what I was going to say about cantos, because cantos was the first one I was going to talk about that began first with the jazz and then with the, with the uh, painting. And so what I had to do in order to do that painting was to listen over and over and over to the music and then try to figure out what is the essence of that music. And it turns out that Cantos has two themes, one uh, elaborate kind of melody and then a counter melody. And so, so I needed to represent in my painting uh, those two uh, ideas and then I also needed to represent the mood. And the mood was a mellow and gentle mood. So Cantos is a painting in rust. So mm-hmm. moving on, um, I'd like then to talk about Brahms Bassa. Can you find that one? All right, that's yeah. Trent said, here's Brahms Bassa, good. We've, oh, there it is. Brahms Bassa um, is, a, is a music first piece of work. And, as, and the music is, is such that it is sort of a rocking, rhythmic um, piece with lots of improvisation. There are three instruments, bass, piano, and, and um, I'm blocking bass, piano, and flute. And so I've represent each, represented each of the three with a different color and tried to represent the improvisations with fields of many strokes. And Karen, are you listening to music as you're painting? Yes, I am. I am listening to the music over and over. I noticed one day getting up in the middle of the night that I was singing Brahms Bassa. I listened to it so many times that it was deep in my yeah. mind. Yeah. So I listened to it over and over. Mm-hmm. On opening night, it was interesting to hear it again 
for I knew every single note oh. of that piece. So, so what happens when, when uh, the music comes first, then the task for the artist is to, is to see if uh, one can develop fit. That is, look at the painting, listen to the music, do the two fit one another? Mm. So, so uh, sort of a period of layering and continuous adjustments mm. or revisions, and, and that's the way that goes. What what happens in you that causes it to fit? Well, it's you, you could go with a a not um, example and say, oh, this isn't anything like the uh, music. Uh, if the music is slow and mellow and I have something frantic, it's not. So uh, it's a, a approximations. It's coming closer and closer. So I'm making adjustments and listening and trying to, um, this is an aesthetic response. So I'm working with paint. I'm working with relationships and masses of color and line. And, and, and just trying to translate that into what I'm hearing. It is a bit of a leap. Uh -huh. Good question, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Mm. Shall we, um, do you wanna play this at all? Do you wanna try it at all, Lindsay? Yeah, Karen and Inga have questions too. Yeah. Like. So Inga. Yeah. yeah, do. Um, after hearing your various techniques described, and seeing your pictures, um, is it safe to assume that you start out with a blank canvas and have nothing in mind, or do you? Well, um, if I'm st if the art comes first, then of course it's a blank canvas. But in my mind and on my palette, there is a, a color scheme. I'm working with, with a color scheme and with a carefully planned palette. So I've mixed the colors and the colors indicate mood, the colors indicate idea to me. Um, and so I also have an idea in mind. And then like a jazz musician, after I block in some masses of color, I begin uh, my improvisation. That's wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Hi, I, I came up to you and met you Friday night and uh, mm -hmm. I, I absolutely adore and love your work so much. Thank you. Um, it's, it's an aspiration for me. Um, and I especially, this is one of my, if not my favorite piece. Yeah. Um, and I loved hearing the music. So um, I'm just kind of curious, you were talking about the three pieces. Do you envision that the blue uh, wavy part is the flute? The yes. Flute part? That's kind of yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting to follow what the bass does, because the bass uh, voice anchors anchors the piece. But in, in this piece of music, which unfortunately we really can't hear, the bass takes a ride. In, in terms of jazz talk. And so I have to do something with that rust color mm -hmm. to, to indicate that, that there's an improvisational turn there. Mm. And, and so um, somebody has an arrow. Do I have an arrow? Oh, I do. Oh, this is a whole new. <laughs> so here, here's, the, here's the bass player. Here's, uh, could be, could be the, the flute, yeah. So I'm trying to represent in this stuff um, the improvisational uh, work. Mm. I think I won't point. Somebody told me when I first started doing this, Karen, don't point at everything. People can figure it out. So I think I'm going to stop that right right now. Oh, actually, it's fine with me. I just and I have actually loved the idea of painting to music myself. The same thing. Um, like Miles Davis, for example, or some, you know, some of the jazz, yeah. jazz sounds. So I am like right on your wavelength. I love this so much. Good. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that maybe uh, later in this talk, um, you'll talk a little bit more about your specific technique of how you um, 
get to this. Like I'm, I'm trying to do this. I am a, um, I'm an abstract painter and I also mm -hmm. use oils, although um, mine are, are so linear and I, it's hard for me to, to get to these. Uh, yours are kind of more, um, you, you know, have a more, more solid figure, uh, yeah. you, you know, in yours than, than what I have. So I'm kind of, if you don't mind revealing that, I would like to know how you do that. If, if, if you're okay with talking about of that. Of course I'm okay with it. And, and um, each one of these paintings is a composition quite obviously. And so, so what the composition um, involves are, are areas or are masses of color and their relationship, their, their balance their, their uh, differences in size, the direction of the, uh, that the eye takes, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm working for an arrangement that, that conveys meaning. So it's, meaning is always uh, the governor of, of what comes next. What am I trying to do? Um, and so, and then I'm just to be frank about it. I'm a, a trial and error person. I try this and I paint over it. I try that. These are layers, and some of the layers are done very skillfully to to leave something behind that I can access later. But some of the layers are, oh, I'm going to cover that up. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And then I'd like to share something when I, my very first attempt at painting, uh, representing a piece of music was to do it literally. And underneath that painting transcending that I said was my favorite was a really bad painting. <laughs> It was, it looked like the, the first painting ever to have the measles because I, because I represented all the notes and all the phrases and, oh. and really got in there. It was just awful. So I learned that we're working with bigger ideas. We're working with, with the essence of something. So you can say, what is this mainly about? Or in response to your question and meaning, um, what am I trying to do? What am I trying to say here? What, what is the, the main thrust? And going for that rather than the specifics. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Anything else? So in this painting, I'd like to know what was your first, first color? What was your um, first layer? What color was it? And was it all over the canvas? Well, you know, this rust, is underneath the the sort of a yellowish color. Okay. So that I can scrape it out. And and I I always feel I need to sort of anchor the bottom of, of a painting. And sometimes I paint that out. But here there was a dark uh, area and then I went over it with blue. So I sort of build out. I think when you say painting in layers, what we really mean is session after session after session, adding paint on top of paint. If you look at the blue area, there are lots of different blues there. Mm -hmm. So you go dark to yeah. light, but it's not the same blue, just adding white. Some of the time it has more purple in it. Some of the time um, it has more cerulean blue in it. Some of the time it's more um, ultramarine. And, and so um, on my palette are all sorts of blues. So did you, um, was your idea that it was going to be sort of this floaty cloud, cloud-like image uh, when you heard the music, was that your idea? Cause it's, it's very uh, light, it's very airy. Yeah. Um, and you know, the flute's super airy. Yeah. I, I, Actually, my feeling was, you know, I actually wrote something about it. I'm going to actually read what I wrote. The music is all about movement and gentle rhythmic patterns representing the colors uh, of the three are the three instruments, bass, piano, flute. And then I use upbeat colors to develop a light and airy mood. 
the painterly riffs are introduced through a variety of lines that echo the musician's uh, elaborate solos. So I've sort of said some of that already, yes. So it isn't, it isn't that I know there's going to be a blue area and I know there's going to be a, a gold area and then I just do it. It is that I start with a color and then put another color on top of it. And then I see what the shape could be. And then I mind the composition. And then I look for uh, now where's the focal point and I begin to, to put that in and then I look for uh, now what does that do with uh, uh, composition as a whole and where is contrast. And so I'm working back and forth, back and forth, balancing, layering adding um, adding line to activate an area. And so, so it's, it's a uh, many, many, many sessions on the same piece. Mm. Did that make sense? Yes. And the red is there, the red over to the left. I see the red peeking out. Yeah, yeah, that's, I'm thinking of that as rust. Yeah, and and I, you know, doing the literal thing. Well, that's the bass player, but but um, just needed some color over there. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I think this is light and airy, isn't it? And so is the music. Yeah. Yeah. It mm -hmm. really, it really. I love this piece so much. Yeah, I do too. There's another one. You know, they they sent me um, this as a recording with a flute player. And then they also made it without the flute, Brahms Basso Duel, I call it. And that's a painting that I'm working on it currently. So that painting has to be related to this painting, but it's different. And so that's what's going on downstairs in my studio now, thinking that about it. Like it's going to float right off the canvas. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. Well, and, be, and, go ahead. Would there be any way you would go to your studio and show us that? <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> it, 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 I wouldn't, but I, I'll tell you, um, they're really, I, I live in a large house and that would be a long trip and you'd have to go clear through the house and, and we're operating with no a, a computer, fine. not a laptop. And so oh. there's kind of no way to do it. Um, but, um, if you give me your email, I'll show you the other one. And, okay. and, uh, and I'll show you two or three versions as it develops, because that is what I'm working on now. So just give me your email and we'll handle it that way. Shall I send it to you in the chat right now? Or do you want to write it right now? I can tell you. I don't want to I don't want to write anything because I have all these things around me to help me prompt what to do. I and, have both of your emails. I can just send one to both of you after okay, this. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll have a little written conversation about it. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. There's another thing I'd like to talk about. That's exactly what I want to talk yeah. about. Um, when I first began painting, the most mind-boggling idea to me was how to ever do a series. And my teacher at the time, who is the person at the bottom of the screen, um, Jane, uh, talked about how to do a series and it was just such a hard idea. Now here is a series and these are, I'm not so abstract now, you've got a clear referent and I'm scraping paint on with, with my palette knife and each painting in this series is different than the other. Which painting do you think I did first? I just wonder what you think, which one? What? I don't know why I think this, but maybe the the blue one, the third one from the left. I don't yeah. know why. Right, right. That one has a lot of experimenting in it, doesn't it? And has and it's right next to the red one, and the red one is where I started, okay. but the blue one came next, and <laughs> and there it went, and the last one is the one second to the right. And you can mm. see that one is more abstract. And I was going to add more uh, elements and decided, nope, I think that's that's it. Huh. So, so these were fun to do. 
and and the grayish one kind of near the center is one painted with very thick paint and um, someone visiting my studio said now is that how you're going to paint and I almost said yes because that was so much fun to layer thick paint over thick paint let's look at mm. eventide can you do that next one Lindsay nope okay no all right Let's go with what you can do next. Just show me what the next one is. Oh, um, this is hmm. This is Bright Horizons, and uh, Bright Horizons was art first, and then uh, music. And, and what I'm doing here is trying to represent a mood. My mood is light and secure, um, and content, as if I'm in an airplane looking down. And and wondering where the ground is and isn't this a fun thing and 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 the musicians did it did it did it well, so this is um, and you can see some scribbles in the center in green and maybe you can see a turquoise mark, and I made those marks um, uh, in order to activate those areas. Uh -huh. That's exquisite. Um, Lindsay, show me another one. Okay. Um, this is Janisonis. This was music first. And in the music, there were large masses of sound that seemed to just sort of almost bloom. And so what I needed to do was to represent that sort of um, blooming, increasing in size uh, sound as if it was bum and then bum and then bum. That's how that music went. And so I needed to do something that felt like that. Mm. Also, there were improvisations. So you can see the marks that I made to um, represent that. And in, oh, I am going to point right there. You can see some scraping marks and I'm using some of the scraping to connect one area to another as if I can almost stitch it together. I'm wondering what was your, what was your first color that you laid down on this? Was yes. it purple or the blue? It, it was this, this goldy stuff. Oh. Because that gold represented the this the feeling of this painting. This painting is a memorial to Richard Lopez. Mm. I know him or knew him. Gorgeous. Oh, do you put a base color? I'm not a painter, so I don't know what I'm talking about really, but. Do you uh, put a solid color on your canvas and then layer on top and of that? So, so evolve in pieces. Yeah, it evolves in pieces again against a palette that I've developed. I know sort of what the palette's going to be. Um, and this palette sort of tends toward an aqua kind of a color, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. I need something to anchor uh, in, uh, with a dark and then the contrast contrasting color, of course, is this gold, and it's at various um, shades. Mm. Yeah. Great. Oh, that's interesting. How did that happen? All right, let's, let's uh, I'd like, can you show the brown one? Lindsay, can you show, I said to Soaring Thoughts. Yes, give me just a second. It's, the, it's at the end, give me just a moment. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, this one is different than all the others. There are two that sort of look like this. This is a gestural painting in which the uh, lines were partially made by gesso that was being um, actually um, thrown at the painting in a, in a big sweeping gesture. And then, and then what I was trying to do with color was to take transparent colors and and to rub them 
into the uh, picture plane to see what kind of depth I would get. So here are some clusters of Mars. I think that we're having some connection issues with Karen. Um, your internet, your, she keeps freezing. Is that what everybody else is seeing too? Dark. Yeah. Easily yeah. the darkest paintings in the um, in the uh, whole exhibit. Mm. You said some. You said a term that I there is music to this one. Oh yeah, I do have that. Um, oh, that would be wonderful to hear that. Yeah, I can play it. It's going to be a little tinny again, but I can play it. That's all right. Well, we get a sense of it, huh? What will happen? That's not good enough. Lindsay, let's just not do it. So you all will have to just be in the gallery, get out your, your cell phones, and listen on your own. Uh, just to say about them. Two composers were very particular in, um, in matching, in capturing uh, the big ideas of the paintings and making sure that, mm. that there was a fit. So it's interesting music and it is music that develops. They tend to lay out a chord structure or a chord sequence or a melodic line and then develop it and, and then uh, uh, take a ride. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting music to see um, as, as they play it. So I okay. urge you to do that. And um, I wonder if you can get to voice of the cello. Which one I have, I have both of them. I have tone and melody. Oh, they're perfect. Oh, that's lovely. Brilliant, you got it. This is voice of the cello tone. And in this painting, I'm trying to, this is a three-part series, voice of the cello, cello melody, chords, and tone. And here I'm trying to say, now what is the sound that the cello makes, that velvety, velvety sound? And how can I sort of represent that? And so that's what's in this one. Um, and can you show any of the others in this series? We're putting you on the spot. No. That's it. Perfect. This is voice of the cello melody. Here I'm trying to let a line show the sweeping melody and to play that line against some masses of color. Mm. Uh, thinking that in an orchestra, there is a background um, supportive structure and then the cello sings out. And I'm using two kinds of line. You can see on the right, sort of a scribbled line. There's my uh, line made line made with the um, uh, oil pastel. And, and the light aqua kind of a color is made with a brush. I think there also are some scraped lines here. So I'm just trying to think about melody and that part of the cello's work. And there's a third one. You think you can get to the next one? I, you, I didn't get that one when you sent the images over. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The middle one is um, a, an attempt to represent chord structure. So the bigger idea here is to say part of this exhibit is is a, a group of series, a uh, series of, of floral impressions. Uh, there's a, a, there are two paintings called Eventide that really represent um, or, or think about uh, the quiet time in the evening with the moods of the, the darker light, but still vibrant colors and that hush that happens at even voice of the cello uh, being the third uh, sequence. There's one more kind of painting in this, in this uh, show that I wanna talk about. And it is 
called Color Studies. And it's a series of eight by eights, just little squares. And mm. they uh, were made by simply playing with paint and, and enjoying um, the process of a swirl of color mixing into another area of color. Mm. Um, and I think I gave you two of those if you happen to find them. Um, I can see, um, that's not it, but that, <laughs> that one is, okay. Uh, rather than talking about color studies, let me talk about what you are showing. This is um, uh, Fantasy in Blue. And you can see in the right central area, some sgraffito blue marks that I think are kind of fun. And these are masses of color. We were talking about composition. Here you have masses of color and mm -hmm. an attempt to dominate in blue and also to uh, um, have contrasting colors and shapes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this painting is um, into the deep um, as if you are a scuba diver, you're way underwater and, and just into the bright colors in that underwater world. Um, uh, you can see in the red mass, a scraped line in turquoise. That means that underneath that red, there was turquoise to access. And once again, I'm dominating in one color in my composition, countering it with another, and then sewing it together with line. In terms of darks and lights, you can find the darks at the bottom and of course along the red, and then you can find a focal point in the lights at the tail end of that, um, uh, aqua light turquoise line. This piece um, has been the signature piece of the show. We've used it in every um, piece. Jane, I see you're, you're showing a painting of mine. Pipe up and say what you want to say. Okay, she doesn't know to, to uh, access the sound, so I'll do it. Um, one day I, um, was Jade's birthday. Can you see the painting she's hol holding up? I have been painting for about three years. And I went to her home and said, you have to accept this gift. Here it is. And it was that painting. Can I talk to you? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can yeah. hear. Oh, wonderful. It's already taken 45 minutes for me to figure this out. That is one of Karen's paintings. And I adore it, among other, several others that I have. So she's Karen, my question uh, to you is that I think that your paintings are so emotionally charged. And when you hear, when you are painting from the music, um, yeah. what, how are you, what are the parts of art, the elements of art that you immediately feel or conceive um that you want to interpret this music with i'm not clear <laughs> well uh, i i i'm i'm listening for motion and for activity okay there you so, go That's so fine. motion and activity can be translated into line and 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 it can also be as you have in the painting behind you a sequence of small shapes that can indicate um uh, a whole bunch of activity. So I'm I'm listening, and then seeing uh, what are my tools. What are the things that I can work with? I can work with shape, size, color, line, texture. And we haven't talked about texture at all. And we can't really see texture, but when you get to the gallery, you can see it uh, with thick layers of paint. And and thick layers of paint can indicate an element in in art. Did that help, Jane? That helps a lot. I'm running out of battery. I have to re-plug in. But uh, I thoroughly, and then, uh, ladies, I'm in charge here. I'm really enjoying this conversation. 
So. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I am. You I know, just have to root. It's yes. not a perfect world. And so we no. what we do is is just go with what's happening. But it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any food. difference because what what this is about is this array of work and yes. this idea. And and uh there are many paintings in this in this uh, exhibit. I think there are uh, 36 large ones and 15 small ones. That's a lot of paintings. And and uh, so there's a lot to talk about. Um, and there's the paintings were done over a period of time and under different circumstances. Some are not connected with music, but when music is part of the pairing, then music is part of the meaning. And so yeah. uh, it's been an interesting problem to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, in my opinion, Karen, I think you have captured the essence of the uh, music in your work, and I see it. Um, I feel I feel the music when I look at your you, the compositions. Yeah, yeah, yes. And Jane, I think when you and I were talking about it, you said something that is exactly on the money. You said, "Well, Karen, this is an anesthetic response in paint." That's what you're doing. The essence of what right. you're doing is an aesthetic response. Right. And then you have to reach inside yourself and find that response. And, and as we said earlier, you can find it by not finding it, but by getting it wrong and saying, no, that's not it. It's something else. And then evolving towards something that is, is the response that you mean. And that's so, coming that's to, from your being a teacher, huh? You're emeritus yes, at Ohio State University. How wonderful that you allowed that process and your students. Well, there was something um, that someone said to me a couple of weeks ago. They said, going from being a professor to being a painter mm -hmm. entailed having a beginner's mind. Yes. And I thought, oh, that's it exactly. Mm -hmm. It was true during that beginner's part. I had to put some of my credentials up on the wall so I could remember that I had used to be good at something <laughs> because I really was a beginner. I really did have to learn the color wheel. I really did have to learn the names of the paints and 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 do all the things that beginners do. Mm -hmm. uh, but the beginner's mind isn't a blank slate it is it has structures and knowledge behind it and and what i knew about was children's composing and so i took what i knew about that and used it as a metaphor for understanding mm -hmm. for example the mm -hmm. repeated attempts uh at getting a good painting were were like revision uh -huh. in in writing so i understood it that way uh -huh. But I did have to have a beginner's mind, and I think it was healthy. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. How do you think working with so much music and like in the in the call and response between your painting and working with jazz? Do you think that that's going to stick with you and with the paintings that you're making now later? Like, are you going to continue to work with music yeah. this way, or how how does how do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I am, and you know. At, I think that that um, it's a good direction. Uh, it's really hard. It, painting yeah. from music is really hard, and so that's why I like it. It's 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 a new challenge. And I thought at the opening night, I wonder if these musicians are still interested. And one of them came up to me and said, "Oh, I have an idea for Paradox, which is one of the big paintings." And he said, "I'll I'll just do it. I I'm I'm." I'm beginning it. So they're in it too. So they're the two composers are going to continue. And I can see some things that I didn't accomplish um, mm -hmm. that I would like to accomplish. I'd like to have some faster music. I'd like to have some lively, I like to experience um, painting to faster music and see that what that would require in terms of line. And so there's some real intellectual questions there. So I have a, uh, every intention of continuing. I also think it's an interesting pairing. Uh, it was full of surprises for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I like that. That's great. That's great. We know you love jazz. <laughs> yeah, I do. 
This was very quiet and gentle jazz, wasn't it? Uh huh. It was wonderful, though. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm. What Karen is not telling you is that she is a musician herself. Yeah. And she does know music. Yeah. She has played music. Yeah, my childhood as a younger was, person. Yeah, my childhood was a a music childhood, and and in the city where I live, they pick certain kids and they gave them all sorts of training. So I was writing for writing music scores in junior high and then played in a symphony orchestra. And I played a whole season and, and got paid $18. <laughs> I remember that. And, and so I, I, and we were playing, um, we were playing the standard symphony repertoire. And so that was a wonderful idea for wonderful experience for a kid. Played the flute, you yeah. know. So um, I've stopped doing that and uh, uh, and now exploring art. So I don't know where we are on this. I don't know um, if there are other things that people want to say. We have such a bad connection, but your faces look so good. And, and uh, it's delightful to hear your questions. And I welcome any conversation with any of you. There's a, there's a rumor about me right now. And that rumor is that I will meet with any small group in the context of the gallery and have a walk around. And that rumor is true because I think another way to look at this, this show is to walk around and, and have uh, a group of people say, well, what about this? And to be able to point to something and say, how did you do this? Or, mm -hmm. or I would do it differently, or what do you wish you had done or whatever questions you would have. So, so I'm game for that. I think it's, it's, a, it's a large show that's up and there's a lot of variety in it. And I think that could be fun, but I've enjoyed this conversation and, uh, um, uh, I'm pleased that we had so many people participating. So thank you for your questions. Uh -huh. I've been really grateful to hear your insights and learn a little bit about your techniques and seeing the results of your just moving and beautiful paintings. Uh, mm -hmm. They're truly Good. wonderful. And thank you for that gift. Good. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. What my family said is this is the first time we've been able to stand back from your paintings. Of course, they've been hanging in my home in my own gallery. And so we've always been up close. And now now you can get back in that wonderful gallery. And, and so you can experience things up close and far away. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that's kind of delightful. Uh, uh, I like the space a lot and I like the lighting. I like the way it's hung. Yeah. I was amazed uh, at your choice and your the process of choosing the musicians. Were they not taken back a bit? Oh, yes. Wouldn't that be wonderful as I play, you paint. Was that a new experience for them? And what was their response to it? No, actually, I, I really thought that that I had invented the whole thing. And as it turned out, they had been in other um, oh. uh, experiences where they had where there was art and music. Yeah. I think the thing that was different is that the pairing, it wasn't art and music just just in uh, as a pair. This is music that is interpreting the art or art that's yeah. interpreting the music. Wow. And so it's not music just to go along. It's, it's, it's a, a second <coughs> rendering of meaning. And that was what was different. And they found it really interesting. I asked them one time, how's this going for you? Because they would meet on Sunday afternoon at, at, in Brian's studio and they would uh, improvise and, and, and play around and, and then they would record something. And I asked them, is this really interesting? And they said, oh yeah, we really like it. We, we're having a good time right. trying to play around with, with what to pick and, and what 
kind of sounds and what kind of themes. And uh, it turns out that Brian Cashwell is just an enormously talented uh, jazz pianist. And so he would just, just really move along with his improvisations, yeah. There, it's too bad we couldn't hear the music because the music, as it develops toward the end of each piece, really gets to be pretty lively and interesting jazz. Well, we'll go to the main gallery and see and hear that wonderful yeah. charism and gift you have of combining the music and the art. It's, we thank you, Karen. It was amazing. You're welcome. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd just like to say too, uh, before, we, before we leave, just on behalf of the Cultural Arts Center of um, just what a, an amazing, beautiful show that this is and one of the um, most well-attended receptions. I think all of Granville emptied out and came over to, to Columbus, so I think that's great. Um, and it was only our third live in-person uh, reception in the last year and a half. So uh, really a special evening, but for a very special show. So um, so thank you again for sharing your work with us and um, and look forward to, to lots more of it. Good. This is Good. Todd, thank you. associate director. We're glad to have you, Todd. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, join us in two weeks, October 28th, our guest artist for Conversations and Coffee at noon by Zoom will be Eric Murphy, painter and sculptor. And he just left a class there at the Cultural Arts Center as he was calling me and we were connecting. Um, a wonderful place in the city, the Cultural Arts Center. Do you not agree that, Karen? We're so happy to have you part of us. It really is. It's a really good gallery. It's good for your work, good, for, good lighting, good space. Uh, good leadership. It's good. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for being with us. You're welcome.